I am really uncomfortable. My hair sits like a squeamish toddler. My eyes can't find a place to rest, so they carry bags. My nose doesn't feel like it belongs on my face, so it runs away and sticks itself into situations that it should stay out of. My teeth aren't that clean. It's probably because of these artificially sweet nothings that come out of my mouth. And I can't tell you what makes me less uncomfortable, my beard or my clean-shaven face. One reminds me of a child trying to fill oversized shoes because dad didn't like his. The other reminds me that I didn't study for this test, and the problem is change over time. But I've never been too good with change, and time isn't on my side to begin with. With problems like this, you can't take the derivative. And taking the integral is out of the question because there is no going back. I am really uncomfortable. My arms are small, so they get tired quickly from carrying these thoughts, these books, these problems, this heart on my sleeve. My legs are long and lanky, so they trip over each other. It doesn't help that I am running as quickly as I can towards a destination called nowhere. I am really uncomfortable. Some days it feels like parts of my body were put together wrong. I am really uncomfortable. I wonder if you can tell. Thank you. Um. <laughs> Aside from something that I'm feeling right now, being uncomfortable has always been an indicator to me that I'm doing something right. In the same way that goosebumps pop up on your arm to let you know it's cold outside, being uncomfortable lets me know that I'm pushing and driving myself in the right direction. Poetry for me is a lot like this. It requires me to be open and vulnerable in a way that can be scary and downright nerve-wracking. But when I put aside my discomfort, I'm able to do something that makes me happy and pursue something that I'm passionate about. The formula for this is really easy. It's passion plus drive equals happiness. And I'm sure a lot of us know this, but we always seem to forget one thing in particular, and that is openness and vulnerability, which comes before the formula. You see, you don't just wake up one day and magically become passionate and driven about something. You start small. You say yes to something here and there, and before you know it, you have the ball rolling. You're passionate. Then you're driven. And before you know it, in your pursuit of what makes you passionate, you become a happy person. But at first, it requires us to be open and vulnerable enough to say yes. This is a lesson I learned a very long time ago, in another very uncomfortable time, high school. <laughs> a time full of awkward growing pains and lessons. At this time, I was all about having fun. This, a lot of times, became a problem because it would get in the way of my education or homework. And it became a problem, definitely, in one class in particular, where I would always be put out into the hallway for acting out and disrupting the lesson. It's safe to say that at that time, I became very well acquainted with the hallway outside that room. I would also become very well acquainted with the teacher who put me there, but that wouldn't happen until later on. You see, later on in my high school career, as I was moving along, and outside that same room, in that same hallway, I would be asked a question by that same teacher that would change the way that I do things. He was the high school track and cross-country coach. And his question was whether I would like to come out and run cross-country or track. At that time, I'd never before in my life played a sport. So thinking of trying one so late made me feel kind of like the late bloomer that I am and very uncomfortable thinking that I wouldn't fit in. Regardless, I said yes. And I'm so happy that I did. You see, the summer and the year following the exchange in that hallway was full of so much hard work. It was also full of so many wonderful people that taught me what it means to be passionate and driven. They taught me that setting goals and achieving them was a great way to find fulfillment and happiness. But I couldn't have learned any of those things without first being open and vulnerable enough to let their lessons sink in. And none of that would have been possible without me first being open and vulnerable enough to say yes to the question in that hallway. You see, we are so many at times in our life asked small questions that we say no to because we believe that the payoff isn't as big as the discomfort that we feel. But I know that's wrong. We can all be passionate and driven people, 
But before we can be any of those things, we must be open and vulnerable enough to accept the lessons and the questions that come our way. Which brings me to my final poem. When I was younger, I could be found flying in every direction, faster than my legs could carry me, almost always on the verge of falling, always shooting off like fireworks. When I was younger, I was never afraid of falling. If you told me falling hurt, I would tell you the moment before you hit the ground was too much fun to miss out on. I think it's why I was always running faster than my legs could carry me. It's the closest I could get to falling. Since then, I have always been running. Running far, running hard, running fast. I have always been falling, falling down, falling hard, falling fast. But since then, I've learned that not everyone likes running and that everybody hates falling. And a long time ago, I learned that running is the art of falling perpetually, each step a leap, powered by faith-filled lungs, each leap a step, catching you before you hit the ground. No wonder people don't like running. <laughs> but a long time ago, I learned that the sky doesn't start above where your hands can't reach. Instead, it starts right above the ground, near your feet. How wonderful to think that every time your feet leave the ground, you become a part of the sky, that every time you fall, you're falling up. But running is hard, and falling is scary. I know it's why most people half-heartedly live half-lives, only receiving a quarter of a whole. What a sad life to live. Because I know you never see the best things in life coming. You seem to fall into them, or they fall into you, like gifts from the sky. And all it takes is a step. Nothing too big, powered by faith-filled lungs. So take a breath. Nothing too big. It can be the size of mustard seeds. After all, that's how faith works. And before you know it, you are taking steps, then leaps. You are running. You are falling. So soon, you could leap far enough. You could run fast enough. You could fall up into the sky hard enough that you become a falling star. And the next time your feet touch down on the ground, you realize you've fallen into something wonderful like the moon, or Mars, or planet Earth. I know, because this is a lesson I learned a long time ago, and this is a lesson I will not soon forget. After all, it lives in my body, in my stride, and why wouldn't it? I have said yes every time. Yes to every difficult step. Yes to every hard one breath. Yes was my answer, and I have been falling ever since. Thank you. <laughs>